Welcome to this online interview by Project Cargo Weekly. Our very special guest of honor today is Clover Trade and Logistics, here represented by Mr. Vernon Tidings. He's the vice president based in Baltimore, and his colleague, Ms. Marisa Eshevari. She's the business development manager also based in Baltimore. To both of you, very welcome to this interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to meet you. Very welcome. And uh, we managed to find out the right timing with the time difference. You're on the East Coast and I'm in uh, Sweden. So uh, glad to have you here as well. Uh, what I always do in my interviews, I always let uh, my accused, as I call them, <laughs> or the interviewees, uh, give a little bit of a background uh, story, a brief story about how they ended up uh, where they are. So starting with you, Vernon, how, how come you are not on Wall Street? How come you are in logistics? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, st I studied um, international business in, in college and um, didn't quite know exactly what field or branch to get into and just happened to see a, a job posting. Back then it was in the newspaper. There, there weren't like LinkedIn or those types of uh, platforms. So you saw an ad in the newspaper. This was back in 2002, applied okay. for the job and uh Got my start as uh, in ocean export operations. Um, I had been my first employer I was with. I was with for 19 years, um, so I got a good exposure at an early stage in my career to kind of more challenging shipments. Um, did it with project cargo, break bulk, um, a lot of licensable um, Department of State ITAR type cargo, mm -hmm. um, out of gauge, um, flat racks, reefer containers. Um, so handled all types of different commodities, um, everything from gosh, back then personal effects to um, explosives, for example. Uh, <laughs> we did a lot of uh, firearms and ammunition, so a lot of class 1, 1. 1.4S um, explosives, um, humanitarian aid, a lot of door-to-door, -door, you know, delivery duty paid type shipments. Um, so yeah, I got, I got exposed to that as an early age. Um, in my career, um, moved on from there. I was there 19 years, moved on to another company, um, was only there for about a year, and then was um, contacted by Clover, who happened to be, uh, I, indirectly, I had worked with Clover as our UK agent, um, oh, yeah. and they had approached me um, about expanding into the US and asked if I would be interested in that. So I knew it was a, a great opportunity. Um, and that's where I am now. I've been with Clover Group uh, just about a year and a half. Okay. Cool. Sounds like you really have a very strong background there and know your stuff. Very interesting. Thank you for that, Vernon. Thank you. So, uh, welcome. Uh, Marissa, how about you? How come you are not on uh, Wall Street? Uh, why are you uh, in logistics? <laughs> yeah, so I actually study international development in college. Uh, so I was interested in the international field, but straight out of college, I found myself working at a car dealership <laughs> as oh. a sales. Oh. So very different. Um, and, you know, when I kind of had enough of car sales, I decided I wanted to get back into international field. Uh, so I started applying for freight forwarding jobs down in DFW. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And so then I moved to the Baltimore area around two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually met Vernon at a prior position. And so when I was looking to, you know, leave the position I was in before, I reached out to him. And that's how I ended up at Clover as the business development manager. So uh, <laughs> small and it was perfect. It was perfect timing, too, because we were actually hiring and expanding. So it was just just the, yeah. the perfect timing. That, that's what I love about this business. It's It's not what you know, it's who you know to a great extent, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, very good. I, I I like this story. Uh, when you uh, mentioned uh, just for our viewers' sake, who who are very international, DFW, uh, Marisa, do you, please explain to them what that means. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a Dallas Fort Worth in Texas. Okay. Okay. So you were based there for a while. Okay. That then that's clear. Right. Um, then of course, uh, Vernon, I'd like to uh, ask a few questions to you, Clover. Uh, does Clover mean anything? Uh, there's this particular logo. Who's behind Clover, and what is your speciality uh, in in Clover Group? Well, Clover Group was um, formed in 1993, um, then known as uh, the Clover Shipping Company. Um, since then, have expanded and branched out into a few other subsidiaries, um, such as a uh, Clover Global Logistics, which is mm -hmm. the 
the freight forwarding uh, branch of that. Um, but we also have um, our own IT um, support, um, our own in-house software developers. Um, so we use our own proprietary um, software um, and where customers can book on the uh, portal um, and manage their shipments, um, complete you know export documentation, um, okay. et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as far as the, the history, yet, um, we're a fully owned um, UK um, okay. business um, in operation since 1993. And since its inception has always um, handled more uh, complex regulated commodities, um, a lot of uh, ITAR licensable shipments, um, project cargo, yeah. um, strong, <clears throat> strong background in export compliance as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, that's so one of the, uh, let, let's say with you, you, aerospace and defense. Yeah, let, let's say you are strong on certain niche products that that uh, not anyone can do. I would say, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably you know about seventy five percent of okay. our business is you know aer aerospace and defense related. Okay. And that's of course there are big demands, and you have to do on time. There's no they don't accept excuses, and I can imagine the demands you have on you <laughs> for that. Absolutely. <laughs> very, very interesting, Vernon. Um, and uh, one more question regarding Clover Group. So where do you physically have offices uh, at in the group right now? Uh, currently uh, based in um, the main office headquarters is based in uh, Shepparton, UK, okay. outside of outside of London. Yeah. Um, then we have the US based office uh, outside of uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we uh, most recently have a <laughs> office in Belgium. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that that I've noticed. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Good, very good. And um, for you, Mar Marissa, business development manager, you are sitting in the U.S., which is uh, for me coming from Denmark. One of your states is bigger than my country, so uh, <laughs> uh, you have a pretty big market to develop business in. Uh, what 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 do you do? In, in is it? Uh, of course, the title says it, but uh, how do you find it developing business for the Clover Group? Do people accept? visits nowadays or, or how, how do you go about selling uh, the services? Yeah, so the majority of visits are still online, especially okay. since the whole United States is my territory. I can't necessarily hop on a plane to California or Texas. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Last, yeah, so we're still doing a lot of uh, business virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, my main job, so obviously Clover UK is already established with their established customers overseas. My job is to make sure that I can bring on some customers here, get them established within mm -hmm. our company, and make sure that we execute um, to our fullest potential to make sure that we are able to retain them as customers. So mm -hmm. that's really my focus right now is mm -hmm. um, bringing on new customers. Uh, especially in the aerospace and defense sector, since we are so uh, competent and specialized in that market. Understand, understand fully. And of course, uh, would you say, do you do a do you do a lot of air freight, sea freight, or is it a mixed bag? It's a mixed bag. Mm. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I mean, Vernon. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm sorry. So, so a mixed bag of all, uh, all of course, what the customer want, uh, you, you can handle. Do you find maybe a, a direct question to you, Vernon? Uh, do you find, uh, Vernon, that you know some of the ship owners not only have they been arrogant from the Corona times because they earn too much? I think you felt that too. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, arrogance is perhaps not even a nice enough word, <laughs> but uh, anyway. And uh, how do you feel that some of the ship owners now want to go ashore and, and tell the customers, oh, book with us door to door. You don't need the forwarder. Do you see that in the States as well? Uh, I, I I do. And I've always strayed away from that uh, door aspect with, with the carriers. Mm -hmm. um, they may offer an attractive rate for a, a, the door pickup or on forwarding uh, delivery. Um, but from, from my experience, um, I've always told, um, my staff that to kind of steer away from that because essentially you lose all control. Yeah. Um, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. All control. So if, if there's an issue, I want to be able to pick up the phone or email the carrier directly and say, Hey, you know, what's the status? Where's our freight? If you have to call a steamship line and, and, and speak with their intermodal department, you're just going to. Yeah. get bounced around and unfortunately yeah. it's it's yeah it's it, not it, it, if the if the intermodal department is in the states it might be somewhere in india in a call center 
it's very <laughs> very well possible <laughs> so yeah no no i i hear what you're saying it's uh, why i'm saying this is because i've had several interviews uh, this week and, and they all uh, have the same song that uh, <laughs> that the forwarder does play a vital role in in customer service pure and simple uh, no no it's not rocket science it's just customer service yeah. right and there's i mean since i i started in the industry back in 2002 there's there's been a lot of changes uh, yeah. most i'd say mostly for the the better um, um, increased efficiency with, you know, technology. Back when I started, we still had to type the, uh, right now it's, you know, the export declaration is filed, AES filed electronically. When I first started, it had to be typed on a typewriter on a a yellow (laughs) piece of paper (laughs) along with uh, like insurance (laughs) certificates and, you know, certificates of origin, you know, had to be manually typed at a typewriter. Um, But one of the things I've experienced is with, um, technology, mainly with the steamship lines, for example, um, having to book, having to book everything online, submit documentation online, everything's done online, which has its advantages, but there's also less of a, a human element to yeah. that as well. There used to be, uh, with particularly with the steamship lines, more of a personal, you know, relationship, mm-hmm. whereas now it's just more. Um, automated. Yeah. So, so um, th- th- some guy told me last week that uh, you can see the shipping lines are hungry when they start to invite you for lunch. So, uh, <laughs> do 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 the shipping lines in the states entertain forwarders? I mean, do they do something to promote themselves, or do they just sit and wait? I I haven't seen that in the recent years mm-hmm. um, with the uh, uh, steamship lines. You know, yeah. they used to you know physically knock on doors and you know yeah. take us out to lunch and. Okay meet with them um a couple of weeks ago it was last uh thursday marissa and i attended the um uh, baltimore propeller club crab feast oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, in, in baltimore which is which is a good event because it's usually it's usually the one time of year i do get to actually physically speak with uh contacts from the steamship lines and the trucking companies so it's yeah. a it's a good event to kind of yeah. you know yeah. still still ne- put a face name. to a name and the network. build and establish relationships with carriers okay and uh, marissa for you in in the sales function you say you you do it online but uh, can, can you manage to uh, my, my question is i'm a little bit old school here and i used to do a lot of sales in in my past and, and vis- try to visit customers nowadays they hardly have time but uh, how do you manage to to do sales online? Do, do is that what they want, or, or or even if you said to to most of them, can I come and visit you? They won't have time. Or how how do you? I don't know the market in the states, so can you explain to me? Yeah, so mostly for introductory meetings, they definitely yeah. want to keep all online. Okay. Um, further throughout the sales process, or just in general, once a customer is brought on board, I am more than willing to hop on a plane and fly or drive because I have local uh, clients that I'm bringing on um, to go and see them in person, just generally in this, you know, first discovery exploratory phase, you know, where you're learning about their needs. uh, They want to mostly keep that over, over zoom. And especially because again, my entire territory is the U S that's generally just the most efficient way for everyone involved. After that though, I am, definitely going out to go do client meetings, present solution designs in person for any accounts that are brought on to make sure that they have that personal touch, make sure I go see them hopefully one quarter, if not, uh, not then at least twice a year. So yeah. that's, that's my, that's my plan. <laughs> I, I, I think that's, that's, that sounds uh, very good. I mean, introduction first online and then uh, hopefully to meet them and shake hands and look them in yep. the eyes, I suppose it always Still can never be replaced. We hope until AI is coming on. <laughs> Let's yeah. hope it cannot be replaced. Uh, otherwise, I think we're all out of a job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what, what's your headcount in uh, Vernon? What, what's your headcount in uh, Baltimore? Uh, for, uh, in in the U.S., we have uh, right at the moment four employees. Okay, four staffs. Okay, cool. Okay, very good. And uh, but we are we are expanding. Okay. Yeah. No, but it's, it's, as some wise man said, as long as you have the right people on the right shelf, uh, you don't necessarily need a lot of them. So uh, if you choose right, which it seems to me that you have done, uh, I think you can manage uh, four people can move as much as 20. <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, our uh, operations team are fantastic. So really, you know, we have the reach where 
getting the reach of a larger forwarder, but we really have that small forwarder mindset with customer service where you can really reach out to one person uh, or two people, myself included, to for all your needs, for all your customer service and updates yeah. and what we, there will always be that personal yeah. touch. And if, if there's a headache or something's really uh, gone gone wrong, you can be reached also after 5 p.m., right? I mean, somebody, yep. you can be reached by mobile and you'll pick it up. Yep, Always. yeah. <laughs> the phone. You got to pick it up past hours. So. Fully agree. No, no, that's uh, uh, my wife here in Sweden. She used to work for Panalpina. So <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. uh, you know how it is. Either you are in forwarding or you're not. So, so yeah. uh, and that... With that comes being able to pick up the phone whenever it is. So, yep. and uh, how do you see, uh, Vernon? If I ask you here, how do you see the market uh, getting out of Corona? And uh, of course, we shouldn't read newspapers; they're all full of negativity on no, on all subjects nowadays. But how do you see the market well, for you? I I see it picking up, and actually, I, I just read an article yesterday um, on LinkedIn that the the volumes are just at where they were pre COVID. Okay. So we're just getting back to those volumes. Um, okay. you know, the, the freight rates are a lot lower. Okay. okay. And and you still, uh, with that experience you have in e uh, EMO class one and other, let's say, niche things, you're still doing quite a bit of that. I mean, also from, from a freight perspective, I I suppose it's, it pays better. I mean, it is better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's so, more of a, so more of a niche market. There's, um, I guess certain forwarders either don't have the know-how or don't want to handle it um, because, yeah, there can be a, a lot more potential headaches. But it's, it, if you know, have the right partners uh, and the right carriers to go to, it's it's there's always going to be a challenge. But selecting the proper carriers and routing is, right. is and, and do you have do you have a criteria for selecting carriers? Are there some that that you work with a long time, or do you go? After price, uh, does your customer push you on price? Of course, they do. Uh, stupid question, but <laughs> but uh, they push you on price, and then you push the carry. Or how do you try to kind of stay stable with uh, a couple of the lines for long term? Well, yeah, it's been like a handful of lines that will even carry uh, class one point four S, and you know, depending right. on the routing. Um, yeah, there's just a handful that that we would use, um, and yeah, so we're kind of limited as to which carriers will handle that commodity. Understand. And where would, would you say your main markets are? I mean, the U S is a huge, uh, both in and export market, but overseas where maybe it's a stupid question it can be no, anywhere, no, but, but, uh, question, but uh, not be, at all. Uh, being part of a UK based group, I suppose there is a certain trade between the UK and. Yes. And the the majority uh, currently at the moment, the majority of our traffic is, um, to and from UK, uh, but we also have uh, pretty regular shipments to um, Central Central and South America, oh, yeah. um, as well as Africa and uh, other ports in Europe. Okay, so worldwide worldwide destinations, but okay. the, from at the moment um, okay. primarily uh, UK. Okay. And Marisa, for, for you, let, let's say you go out there and, and you do your, your thing and you sell and you get that shipment. Let's say it goes overseas to where you don't have an office. Do you then have an established network that you can cooperate with uh, around the world? I mean, you have contacts uh, that you can use for door delivery or... Right? Yep. Yeah. So we have an established agent network uh, okay. throughout the globe so that yeah, if we don't have an office there, then we have a reputable agent who is able to do the final um, customs clearance and door delivery if need be. OK. Uh, what, may I ask, uh, do you have your own bill of lading in Clover or do you use the, the carrier's uh, bill of lading mainly? Oh, we have our own our own house bill. We are okay. a licensed uh, NVOCC as okay. well as freight forwarder. So okay. we, we do have the ability to issue our own house bills. Okay. Uh, Vernon, one, one thing, I, I'm just asking this question mainly for our many of our viewers who may not know what the FMC is, but briefly, can, can you explain what is the FMC, FMC in, in, in the sure, States? Sure, the, uh, the FMC is the Federal, <laughs> Federal Maritime Commission, and it's essentially the competent authority that regulates uh -huh. all inbound and outbound marine uh, traffic uh, to and from the United States. Okay. Um, so to operate as a 
freight forwarder, um, yeah. you need a, a license with the M the uh, F the FMC, and then also to operate as an NVOCC, is, uh, okay. like I said, as for us to issue our own house bill. Oh, um, right. It's a separate um, license. Okay. With the FMC. Yeah, because I, I, I'm sometimes I, I, we don't have a similar thing here in Europe. We have some some kind of uh, regulation from the EU, but we don't have an FMC as such. And I can see that it seems FMC very active in making sure you can complain to them if the carriers are, let's say, shall we say, raping you on detention charges and and whatnot, as they did during Corona. I, I can, I, if whatever I, I've read is true, uh, we don't have that in Europe in the same way. So, would you? So FMC is a government body, and you can take grievances Correct. there if you have with the lines, and they can. Issue a ruling or how? how... That is correct. Yes. Okay. okay. And there have, and, I have yeah. seen rulings, you know, about the, mainly uh, during COVID, you know, detention and, and demerge charges yeah. where the FMC had to step in and, and regulate that. Okay. So, so it is an extra, uh, you know, in that sense, it's good, but it's all kind of an extra um, burden on forwarders and NVOCCs. Yeah. Um, if you file a house bill, you either need to have a, uh, a tariff. Um, rate filed or enter into a, what they call like a NVOCC rate agreement or mm -hmm. service arrangement. Okay, so, so there so, are there has been some advancements in in that over yeah. the the past several years. So so for in some areas it's good, but it's also a layer of bureaucracy. I could imagine. I mean, correct for for for, for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Another that, kind that, of record record keeping requirement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that that clarifies it, and I think many of our viewers, you know, they're sitting in Asia or elsewhere, Middle East. They might not necessarily know what FMC is if they are not so familiar with U.S. trade. So, very good. No, but it seems to me that you have quite an active team. Uh, are, are you a member of any networks currently? Do you have any uh, network affiliation or membership uh, with other forwarding groups? Uh, we are members of the um, X2 network, okay. and more recently, um. CLC. Oh yes, yeah. I heard about. <laughs> uh, to the unobserved uh, or ignorant uh, viewer here, of course, I have heard about it. Yes. <laughs> so um, that that's good to hear. I, I'm glad that you are a member of some reputable network. <laughs> 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 right. So, uh, Marissa, looking in your crystal ball, do you feel uh, pumped up and ready to go and secure more business? Do you feel uh, the mood is good and the uh, customers are willing to listen to you? Yeah, absolutely. What I've been finding recently is that customers are definitely more open to adding okay. new carriers okay, uh, to their supply chain. Um, I've had several conversations already uh, with potential customers who are looking for a change, especially in this niche aerospace and defense yeah. uh, industry. So, yeah, I'm definitely seeing customers open for change, uh, willing to listen, uh, which isn't always the case. Sometimes they just show you to the door or you can't even get past the gatekeeper. <laughs> That's right. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but th that, that change uh, as opposed to previous years uh, that customers are actually willing to engage with the idea of adding new carriers as opposed to sticking to the status quo. Yeah, yeah. No, but that, <laughs> that's good. And you have the flexibility, it seems, with the size you have. I mean, you have the flexibility. You can act quick and you mm -hmm. have a kind of flat organization. It's not like a... How many exactly. layers layers of bureaucracy to take a decision? I guess. Yep, exactly. So. Um, so okay, very good. No, I I must say <clears throat> to both of you, you answered uh, to my questions <clears throat> very much in detail, and uh, it seems to me like you have an interesting outfit. I mean, you are you are a small team, but you are agile. You can move quickly. Uh, UK, of course, uh, is a big market for you, but now with opening in in uh, in Benelux as well is. Interesting. Uh, how is your, your global headcount of your own staff, would you say? How, how many are you in total in the group? Uh, approximately 50. 50. Wow, well, that's, uh, that's pretty good already. I mean, it does. 50 uh, is also, it means you have to book some cargo. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the minute you are more than two, you have to really hang in there. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I'm here for. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you have to prove it. <laughs> yep, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Very good. No, but uh, I want, must say, uh, Vernon and Marissa, I want to say formally here, many, many thanks to, to both of you for giving input on the Clover Group and uh, also what you can do uh, sitting in the States and with your overseas offices. Uh, Vernon, many thanks to you. Marissa, Thank you. Many, many thanks to you as well. Yeah, 
course. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure. And it to all our, <clears throat> all always, anytime, and to all our viewers, listeners, and readers from around the world, this was yet another great interview by Project Cargo Weekly. Our special guests of honor today have been Mr. Vernon Tidings, the Vice President at Clover Trade and Logistics, and his good colleague here, Ms. Marisa Echevada, Bari, uh, mm -hmm. the Sales and Business Development Manager, uh, both of them located in Baltimore. And before I close this, how are the Baltimore Orioles doing? Oh, they're, they're having a fantastic season. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'll just say to, to all my viewers here, for those of you into baseball, it is, uh, I believe, a baseball team. So uh, good luck for you and uh, wishing you all the best. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate so, it. So uh, again, uh, for me, thank you very much and stay tuned for more interviews in the near future. Thank you. Thank you.